Hi folks, welcome to my home. I began to prepare this video as the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada planned to join with the Anglican Church in Canada in lifting up the seventh Sunday of Easter as Jerusalem and the Holy Land Sunday. It was my privilege a number of years ago to join a study tour of this region to speak with people of the Holy Lands and to learn some of the plight of their lives in that time and place. I was shocked and saddened by the ways that racism influenced the ways that people treat other people, how oppressive and dehumanizing strategies held people to the ground, and how Christians in another part of the world were persecuted ruthlessly. To be honest, in many ways it was much easier to compartmentalize the experience, rationalizing it as being far away in another land. The events of the past couple of weeks teach us something, though. With Black Lives Matter issues taking over the news feeds, protests in our streets and around the world, we know that it is not acceptable to mildly think that this cannot happen here, turn a blind eye to injustice, or simply walk away. And so we must stand with Black people, Indigenous people, all who are marginalized, those whose voices have been silenced, those whose humanity has been trampled upon. We must stand together with the Palestinian church in praying for an end to oppression, to pray for peace and for safety for all in the Middle East and all around the world. Today, you will see some of the photographs that I took on that trip. Let's take a moment now and turn to God in worship and prayer as we begin today with thanksgiving for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our call to worship is based on Psalm 66. Blessed be the Lord our God, who keeps us safe, and gives us strength to get through troubled times, who does not withhold love from us, has promised to be present and listen to our prayers. Blessed, Blessed be, be the, the Lord, Lord our God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let's pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, to you fulfill your promise to be with us. us. You came in the form of your Son, that we might unite with him in suffering and in joy, that we might all be drawn to your loving presence through Jesus Christ. Stand with us now, that we might know the truth of your promises for this time and for all times. Amen.
The reading for today is John 17, 1 to 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. End of the reading. Jesus prays for his disciples. When they didn't seem to know what to do, Jesus prays for them, that they may know who and whose they are, that they may be one. What a lovely thought. What a sign of love to pray for them in this way. Do you think that Jesus is praying for us in the same way now? A couple of weeks ago, as the bulk of this worship video was planned, it seems like a world away from the way things are now. We continue to gather online as we're able. The coronavirus remains a serious threat. We do our best to be together while we remain apart. And as warmer weather continues, we recognize a seasonal change. And yet, what we see today is overshadowing that story. There's another story, not a new one, but very old and powerful one that is leading toward a cultural change. While we stay at home to flatten the curve, we have on our television sets been witness to the crying out of people who have lived with racism. We are hearing their stories and most of us just don't know what to say or do. The Black Lives Matter movement is that is sweeping the planet with viral potency has hit with an outpouring of heart-rending emotional stories of the black experience, hearing of the fear that they have lived with, the disappointments and tragedy resulting from cruelty and injustice for generations in the U.S. and at home here in Canada. And we have been further challenged to take stock to consider our implicit role, active or in silence, in perpetuating the poor treatment of others who are different, marginalized and prejudiced by this color of their skin. Christians everywhere are called to stand on the side of social justice, of fairness and of love to listen. Because when we listen, we learn. When we learn, we do better. As a society, we must do better. Take heart, God is doing new things in the world and it will be better. Let's pray together. As Jesus prayed for his disciples, let us pray for each other now. Gracious God, help us to do your will as human beings, to stand up for social justice where there is none. Help us to love our neighbor and care. Show us ways to respectfully listen and learn, to become partners in righting the wrongs for the sake of future generations. We pray in the name of Christ. 
Amen. Let's take a moment now and reflect as we hear the music, Seek Us and Find Us. Join together with common faith and purpose. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, we pray for the church, for our bishops, Susan and Michael, our church council, and for those who work quietly behind the scenes. We pray for creativity, courage, and hopeful joy as we move forward into a new world. We pray for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Lands, and for Bishop Abraham and his staff, their pastors and leaders serving you in another part of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government leaders, for Prime Minister Trudeau, Premier Ford, and for the members of public health teams who gather and analyze for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for patience and strength as we continue to self-isolate for the common good. Help us resist the temptation to follow our desires for life as it used to be, and give us the faith to hear and listen to your gift of medical science. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are struggling with loneliness, with feelings of hopelessness, and we ask that you continue to find safe ways of reaching out to help others. Healing God, we pray for all who are ill. We pray for those who are in hospital and those who stay at home in quarantine. We pray for all frontline workers who risk exposure to care and provide for others. Lord, keep them healthy, safe, and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice and hope, put an end to racism and inspire in us all a willingness to listen and to hear the cries of your people that ask for an end to fear and anger and an emergence of equity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for all who stand in special need, those we name aloud now or hold in silence. We pray for Darlene and Shirley, Bob, Don, Tom, Paul. Grant them a measure of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Merciful God, we thank you for the change of seasons, for the beauty of spring blossoms, fresh breezes, and warm sunshine. We thank you for fresh air, clean water, and chirping bird song. We thank you for these signs of hope and renewal in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we lift our prayers to you. Those we speak, those that are silent, and those that only you know, trusting in the promise of your mercy and grace, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.